last time on the Skip and Josh podcast. Maybe there's some sort of advantage. I know what you're going to say, I think. <laughs> no, you know what the advantage is, right? Teams come to Las Vegas, they're out with strippers in their hotel room till four in the morning, and then they got to play the next day. This yeah. is what's happening, right? Yeah. So, so maybe that's I part mean, of the strategy. So if you're George McPhee, you know, the GM, yeah. maybe you maybe you have like a team of people in your staff that are like the hospitality people. <laughs> the Skip and Josh podcast is on now. Hello. Hey, Skip. What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. So first of all, happy birthday. Thank you. Well, birthdays are merely symbolic of how another year has gone by and how little we've grown. No matter how desperate we are that someday a better self will emerge, each flicker of the candles on the cake, we know it's not to be. But for the rest of our sad, wretched, pathetic lives, this is who we are to the bitter end. Inevitably, irrevocably. <laughs> Happy birthday. No such thing. Did you do anything special for your birthday? Yeah, I went uh, for dinner with uh, two good friends of mine, Aaron Grande and Paula Schwabel. Oh, you mentioned um, Ariana Grande last week. Yes, except he's actually Aaron, <laughs> Aaron Grande, Grande. But yes, yeah. other people have called him that as well. Very nice. So I went for dinner with them last night. And uh, actually tonight I'm going for dinner with um, Joe and Carly. Great. My favorite people in Toronto, except for you. <laughs> As you can see, I have a black yes. eye. I can't believe it. The uh, The listeners kind of know that we we speak over like video, Skype video, so we could see each other. So you're about to say like, you have a black eye. First of all, you're a crazy black eye, and you're all swollen on your nose and everything. So what the hell happened? I, I broke my nose playing ball hockey. Um, <laughs> someone someone took a shot, and yeah. someone else tried to block the shot, and it deflected and went up high. And I had no time to move or react, and so it hit me right on the bridge of the nose. It was actually the ball that hit you. Yeah, not, and it's, not, you know, yeah. those hard orange balls. A nasty gash on his nose. Both players stayed in the game. And hit me on the bridge of the nose. And I was wearing protective eye goggles. So my eyes... Really? Yeah, I always do. Wow. Yeah. So luckily... No, but I mean, look, when you seeing what you look like is, you know... Yeah, but I think the goggles... There's a part of me that thinks the goggles may have caused this black eye because the impact of the... The frame yeah. of the goggles is what may have eye. caused this under my eye. I'm not sure yeah. how wow. that works, but it's better that uh, you know this happens because of the goggles than my eye being exposed and the ball hitting me in the eye. Yeah, of course. So um, you look like you you look like you went about you know 30 seconds with Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I don't know if I could last like. that long with well him. one punch, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, so that's what happened, and I need to see a specialist next week. All right, and, well, that uh, was an eventful week. Might the crazy to... thing is, it, they might have to do some surgery on your nose to, like, fix it up. Yeah, they don't call it surgery. They call it a procedure. Like, I think it's like getting an oil change, you know, the way they talk about it. You walk in, they do it, you leave. It's the most painful thing on the planet, apparently. But it takes, like, really? two seconds. Okay. That's good for them. Yeah. <laughs> that's how they make their money. Yeah. <laughs> It was an eventful week. I it, I was in New York this week for a couple of days. I was gonna say you you always you're in you're always in these exotic places. <laughs> it's been my busiest year of travel for work. I traveled once a month, it, it, uh, not just for work for vacation too and stuff. So I've been I went away roughly once a month, um, you know, on average. But the weird thing is, like, you broke your nose. Like, you sent me a picture of your broken nose like three days after it happened. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, because I didn't really talk to you. <laughs> So like, I know that's what that's what I thought was weird because we were in New York and we're texting all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. and you didn't even mention by the way I got, broke my nose because because the the funny part is I realized after we finished texting that I forgot to mention it to you and I was gonna I was gonna mention it <laughs> yeah but like because I don't I don't look at myself right so I don't see this yeah yeah, yeah. so it's when not, when someone when someone sees me like I saw I saw Aaron and his girlfriend yesterday they I haven't yeah. seen them since it happened. Um, I completely forgot 
that it happened. And then like and they were like, "Oh my god, what happened? Exactly, what happened?" Yes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because yeah. I don't feel it; it doesn't hurt at all. Right. Sure. Um. So only if I look in the mirror would I would I remember that it happened. Yeah. And so I just forgot to mention it to you. Um. And so then, yeah, then I sent you a picture. You know, we started to try to refine the content of the show to one topic Mm -hmm. at a certain point this year. And we said we're going to stick to one subject per episode. And we did that for about a good six weeks. Yeah. (laughs) I think. And then when the NFL, NHL, like, all started up, you know, like, when the NHL season kind of started up and we had too many things to talk about every week, we, we were back to kind of our old format where we're just like... Whatever's on our mind. But I, I I feel like we're staying true to the premise of the show, which is like a conversation, right? So like whatever's on your mind, you're gonna you're gonna let me know. Whatever's on my mind, I'm gonna let you know. So I have like I wrote down like five, six bullet points of possible things to talk about. And I don't know if you have anything like that that you ca- caught your eye this week. Well, the ball caught my eye this week. I did write down a few things. Right, okay. Um, you know what? Before we start on this week, can I mention something that happened last week? Yeah, go ahead. So it's Sunday afternoon. We're sitting down to watch the Eagles game, me and my son. Okay. And uh, Your son, who, by the way, texted me to wish me happy birthday. That's yeah. the first time he's ever done that. Oh, that's so sweet of him. Did my daughter text you? No. no. <laughs> she's too busy. She's way too busy. So, so uh, we sit she's, down. To- <laughs> she's, hold on. She's 12, 13, 14. 14, 14. Sorry. She's too busy. She thinks she's 20. Yeah. So she's she's too busy at 14. What's going to happen when she's 24? I'm very scared. <laughs> very, very scared. So we sit down to watch the Eagles game. And then uh, we're trying to look at like what other games are on and what games are on in the afternoon. And then I mentioned to him, I'm like, oh, by the way, the Grey Cup's on tonight. And he's like, the Grey Cup's today? <laughs> And this is a kid that, like, follows every sport in the world, mm-hmm. right? Like, he knows everything about everything. He's like, the Grey Cup's today? I'm like, yeah, the Grey Cup's today. He's like, who's even playing? <laughs> so so just to, just to, like, highlight, like, what happened to the CFL in Montreal, like, as soon as the Alouettes are out, mm-hmm. it's like... The casual fans like him and me were, 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 we, I didn't watch the Grey Cup at all. Mm. And I kind of feel sorry that I didn't because it was, seemed to be so cool. It was in the snow yeah. and Shania Twain, they wheeled her out in a dog sled at halftime. <laughs> and then, the, then, uh, 90, 100 yard fumble return and like, you know, this shocking ending. And then at the end of the game, you know, one player on Calgary basically blaming the loss on the guy that fumbled, which mm-hmm. you never, never happens so i don't know how many of our listeners follow the cfl or the gray cup i just thought it was interesting that it was completely lost on me until until after the game you know uh, and i'm surprised i mean I, you're I, in toronto so obviously it's a different feeling with the argos in the game right you, you're hearing about it yeah but the thing is you and i and your son watch tsn quite a lot and so mm-hmm. you had to be living under a rock not to know that the Grey Cup, because every single, every second commercial on TSN, was, like if you're watching yeah. hockey or if you're watching NFL football, or if you're watching NBA basketball, every second yeah. commercial on TSN was tune in for the Grey Cup. It's but like, I think, so I, I don't, see how, I don't see how you guys didn't know about it. I think that shows. I think that shows the value of commercials. We're so immune to them. Commercials is now the things that you skip because most shows you record, or when you go to the bathroom, or when you get food, or in the case of like kids my son's age, it's when you look at your phone, right? Mm. Like I think I think commercials are like almost like going. Like they're almost wasted now on people. Well, certainly if it's a if it's like if it's like a show on uh, network television, yeah, like yeah, a one yeah. hour weekly watch. drama or something, you don't watch the commercials because you don't yeah. watch the show live. But when you're watching sports, it's the only yeah. thing that anyone yeah. watches live anymore, and yeah. so you can't fast forward the commercials. So. Anyway, so did you watch the Grey Cup? I didn't watch any of it because um, my <laughs> buddy, my buddy Steve Sloan, was in town. Oh, and, Steve Sloan! And we were hanging out, and I lost yeah. track of time. And next thing I knew, I got home, and and the game was over. So I've heard his wife is our number one fan of the show. Iona is a big fan of the show, and Iona has her own podcast coming out shortly. Do you uh, want to plug it? I can't plug name, it or? because I don't know the name of the show. But um, okay, but, so like. Iona, give us uh, give uh, 
give Josh a shout. And as soon as your podcast is up, we'll definitely, you know, we'll advertise for you. Yeah. We'll put you in the time slot on our advertising time slot. We'll have like the razors with the orange handle. Yeah. The the mattresses that come in a really tiny box. Yeah. And the really comfortable underwear. Yeah. And then Iona's podcast. Don't forget about the sandwiches that you can choose what you want on top of them or in them. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. All right. So that was the Grey Cup segment. No okay. more Grey Cup. We're done. CFL. We won't talk about CFL till maybe next Grey Cup, I guess. Probably. Right? Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I just want to uh, say, I never mentioned this on the show and I regret it because before the Argos hired uh, Mark Tressman and Jim Pop, yeah. I said to myself, and I should have said oh, it to no. you, I, I, that yeah. that they should do that because they had just fired their GM and their coach mm-hmm. late in the off season. It was already like, I don't know if it was January, February, yeah. March, whatever. It was very late. It was yeah. very late. And like, you know, uh, the combine was coming up. The draft was coming up. Teams were already in, in full preparation mode for the coming yeah. season. And the Argos fired their GM and coach. And I'm like, that's weird. That's a weird time to do that. And I said, if they're going to hire somebody new, they need to hire someone, you know, who knows the league really well so that they yeah. can hit the ground running. And there weren't that many people that fit that description out there. So I just, I said in my head, you know, they should probably go get Jim Pop, who the Alouettes let him go for whatever reason. And well, then he Mar- was there too long. You know, you, you don't stay at the same job forever. He was there forever. I think, you know, he got tired of it. The city got tired of him. And, you know, that's all well and good. Fun. But, but meanwhile, Look what the Alouettes did. They went and they cleaned house. They got all these new people and they had their worst season ever. Yeah, they sucked. And 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 meanwhile, Toronto gets Pop and Tressman and they go from last to winning the Grey Cup. Look, Tressman is not hasn't done anything in the NFL. No. He's been actually terrible. Even as an offensive coordinator, he's not been good. But he's a really good CFL coach. <laughs> Actually, right? actually, he was a good offensive coordinator when it, when he had Rich Gannon at his QB, I think. Yeah, yeah, but that's years ago. That's like two two thousand four. Yeah, he's been a great CFL coach. All right, enough of CFL. Yeah. So I was in New York this week. I know. Yeah, so I'm you jealous. Know the big news. You know what the big news was in New York? That you stayed across the street from Shake Shack. <laughs> you do go on Facebook. <laughs> Sometimes. I do stay across the street from Fish Shake Shack, yes. But um, Eli Manning. Now, there's two things that, that I watch. When I go to the United States, it's my chance to watch ESPN. Oh, right? this is why I wanted to talk about this. So go ahead. So I got Sports Center. I've got the, the morning show, which is like not even Greenberg anymore. It's Golick and something. Mm-hmm. I've got uh, Stephen A. Smith, First Take, you know, all the shows, right? All they're talking about is two things. I'm going to do something really weird now. I'm going to talk about something that I'm going to tell you that I don't want to talk about, which is something that I do a lot. Yeah. But there, there's two things, if you follow that, there's two things that everyone's talking about that were making me crazy because there's no reason for spending a day, talk a week talking about this stuff. Eli Manning and Tiger Woods. Now, you know how I feel about Tiger Woods. Oh, my goodness. Right? Okay. Now, I know Tiger Woods is doing great. He's having a great week on this, like, amateur course in his own event mm-hmm. that he's doing and he's making this comeback i don't want to hear about it right until he's until he's shooting par at the masters or in a major tournament i don't want to hear about it because this guy he can't he hasn't made a cut in like six years so all of a sudden he's gonna come back and resurrect himself so i'm not buying it and i don't want to hear about it and eli manning oh. I don't know. Like they were making such a big deal out of the Eli Manning thing, and the whole in the back of my mind, I was just thinking, they're two and nine. Who cares? Bench the quarterback. Don't bench the quarterback. Start this guy. Start that guy. I don't care. The coach is getting fired at the end of the year. Everybody knows it. Let him do whatever the hell he wants. It doesn't make a difference to anybody. Like to me, it was like, yeah, it's disrespectful. Who cares? They're two and nine. You know, it shouldn't matter. We should have called this segment "What Bugs You." It really, well, those two things really bug me this week. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing I'll say about, about Eli Manning, it is a big yeah. deal because he's started what 200 consecutive games or something like that. And, and as you said, the coach is going to be fired. So why is the coach making a, a big decision like this when he's not even going to be around in, in a month or two? Furthermore, you know what? I could understand if they wanted to try out some new young QB to see yes. what they have. But they're using Geno Smith, who no one even knew he was still in the league. 
Now, I completely agree with everything you're saying. Yes, it's disrespectful that they they benched him, right? Like his streak. Yes, it's stupid because they're not trying out a rookie quarterback. They're trying out Geno Smith, right? But like my whole point is they're two and nine. It doesn't make a goddamn difference. Who cares? Talk about something else. That's what bugs me about like the sh- watching ESPN. ESPN. That's what bothers me is because I mean I guess look we don't have the problem we we don't have the problem of having to record something every day right we we wait a week and then we write down five things that we want to talk about and we talk about them and we can talk about them for an hour these guys i guess are under some kind of pressure to have the take of the day the hot take whatever they're going to talk about so that they make a big deal out of everything everything becomes the big deal of the day right so that's just made me mental because all they were talking about is Eli Manning i'm like okay we know you guys like him in new york but you know what he hasn't been good for like five years, and and they're two and nine, <laughs> you know. So maybe the coach wants to do something, or actually, Giants fans should be happy because they're actually going to be worse. They're making the team worse with this decision, so that's going to get them closer to a better draft pick. Who wants to win games, right? They don't want to win games; they want to lose games. If you're a Giants fan, you should want to be losing games at this point, not winning games. Do you know Smith gives them a better chance of losing games? So then maybe that's why they're doing it. And they can't say that out loud. Right. But. And as for and as for why, you know, ESPN annoying you because they keep rehashing the same story over and over again. The thing yeah. is, there wasn't much other sports news to talk about. So they had no choice but to talk about that 24-7. Do you have other stuff on your list? I mean, I can keep going. Well, yeah. I mean, you mentioned how you were in the States and you got to watch mm-hmm. ESPN. And I believe yeah. you were in L.A., what, less than a month ago, and you got to watch ESPN ago. at that time yeah. also, right? So My last we, two trips, I got lucky because I got to watch Duke This both is times. exactly what I wanted to talk about. I have not mm-hmm. seen Duke play once at all. You've seen them play at least twice that I know of, once against Michigan State, once against Indiana. So, you know, you're seeing, like, classic NCAA, you know, programs yeah. that have been great yeah. for years. Yeah, and uh, so I just want you to tell me, like, the, is the team any good? I mean, I know they're good because they haven't lost, but I, I we kind of alluded to this on like a couple episodes ago. It's a totally different Duke team than you're gonna. You're, when you see this team, you're gonna be like, "What's going on? Like, wh- wh- who are these guys? Like, wh- it's not the same style of play as we've ever had." You know, for the past however many years has it been, four guys stand around the three point line with one guy standing in the middle, right? Even last year, right? That's that's the system. Chuck threes and and hope we sh- hope we're hot. And that hasn't worked very well because you come up, you get to a game where you don't shoot well, and then you end up losing to Mercer, right? Right. Or you end up losing to Lehigh. you know whoever Lehigh. Or last year we lost to South, South Carolina. Carolina, right? Like that's what happens, right? And the team that did win, right, recently mm-hmm. was the team that actually took the least amount of threes, the team with Okafor, Tyus Jones, Justice Winslow, right? Because Okafor was such a presence on the on the post that he could score from inside, right? right. So we didn't have to always rely on shooting threes. There was other ways to score, right? Mm-hmm. That's what this team is. But the, the thing about this team is we have this guy, Marvin Bagley, mm-hmm. right, who, who committed to the team, you know, basically a day before the season started, right? Like as late as possible is when he committed to Duke. I mean, yeah, he's going to be one and done. The way he's going, he's going to be the first overall pick in the draft, and he is a hundred percent the real deal, right? He's tall. He's 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 not uh, an NBA body yet because he's a little bit thin, but he's not thin like Harry Giles, super skinny, right? He's a little bit bigger. He's got this crazy hair, which makes him look even bigger, and he he could do everything. Like he can handle the ball, he can shoot threes, he can score from the inside like crazy. He's a crazy rebounder. You know what used to frustrate you? I know all the time is we were such a bad rebounding team forever, right? Mm. Because we're always so small. We are a dominant rebounding team this year. Like this guy cleans up everything. And then Wendell Carter Jr., 6'10", playing right next to him, who would normally be playing center also, cleans up every other rebound. So, I mean, it's such a different team in that everything goes inside. <clears throat> There's very little threes being shot. The only guy that's really chucking threes is Grayson Allen, which is fine. Mm-hmm. And they have this guy, Gary Trent uh, Jr., who can hit a little bit of threes, but not like, you know, he's not a, a sharpshooter by any means. So I think you're going to enjoy watching this team because it's a totally different thing. And they're playing a zone defense half the time, which is also mental. I don't understand that. <laughs> so, 
uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's a fun team to watch. And I mean, I watched the game against, I watched those two games that you mentioned, but I also watched another game online that I streamed against Texas. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because that game went to overtime. Duke almost lost that game. They were down, I think, by 16 with five minutes to go, made this crazy comeback and actually won. But like, correct me if I'm wrong, Duke should beat Texas easily, no? Yeah, anybody could beat anybody, honestly. And it's still, you know, there's still five freshmen on the, four freshmen on the court, right? I mean, these guys are, you know, six games into their NCAA career. They don't know what's going on. Hopefully they're going to keep improving by the time we get to the tournament and they'll be really good by the time we get to March. But, you know, there's a big difference between a third year, a fourth year guy versus a freshman just in terms of experience, size, you know, it's like we've said before, men versus boys, you know, so anything could happen. But like Duke came, went to that tournament, um, the Phil Knight tournament, mm-hmm. in Portland. Yeah. And they came from behind every game. So they, they were falling into a very dangerous uh, pattern in that falling, falling behind and then coming back. But I really feel like they have so much confidence in themselves that they feel like they can come back against anybody. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Marvin Bagley, honestly, he's a real deal. And it, it's too bad because he's going to overshadow the other the other rookies on the team, Trent, who I mentioned, Wendell Carter, and the other one is Trayvon Duval. Trayvon Duval would be like possibly a, a number one pick, you know, if he goes plays anywhere else and gets and becomes the focal point of a team, you know. But here he's like just another another guy, you right. know. Yeah. So and I don't know if you saw the quotes about Mike Krzyzewski about Marvin Bagley. Basically, he's saying he's like. He's like no other player he's ever coached in a, in, a, in a way. He's he's this rare talent who's like, he's a freak of nature in terms of his physical ability, but also I forget the exact quote. It basically, he's working so hard in practice. He's such a team player. He doesn't want to be, you know, the doesn't want to be the guy that has to score every basket. He he's 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 very very unselfish, you know. So they're. Yeah, they're a joy to watch, honestly. Like, I think it uh, should be a fun, you know, lead up to, or like, should be a fun March Madness, you know, for, for Duke fans, you know. Speaking of watching Duke, yeah. my first opportunity to watch them on television won't come mm-hmm. until um, a week from today when uh, Duke's playing Boston College and that game, it's an ESPN game, but it's on TSN in Canada. As usual, you're right, right on point with looking ahead at the TV schedule. Well, because I was dying to see when I could see them. And so the first game they're showing is against Boston college. That's well, no, that they're showing other college basketball games. The first Duke game on TSN is not till next week. What about like on CBS? Don't they start? Yeah. They, that only starts in January yeah, um, after the Super Bowl. Yeah. They, and uh, I think there's only showing. two, maybe three games, uh, Duke games that is on CBS because mm-hmm. CBS doesn't usually show the ACC games. Right. No, so it's that's only true. like when Duke is playing against St. John's or something or, right, or some right. other conference that, that CBS can show that game, I think. Right. No, no, you're right. You're right. So, that's usually what so happens. So there's, there's not that many games that, that I'll get to see unless, unless I find some illegal stream that I don't even know about. So I just want to point something out. We're so Duke focused, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're a Duke hater, mm-hmm. you're probably hating our show right now. Mm-hmm. Like this, this is no good for you. No. If you're a North Carolina guy, no. Yeah. no. There, people are probably turning off. Remember I told you a few weeks ago about this podcast? The finally a pretty good. I was like excited. Hey, there's this really good college basketball podcast. I think yeah, I remember you telling me about this. It's called uh, One Shining Podcast. It's a good name for it. It's a great name. Now, unfortunately, the show sucks. <laughs> Should we be trashing <laughs> and, other shows? Yeah. Now I've unsubscribed from it. I'm going to tell you why it sucks. These guys know what they're doing. They're fine. The show doesn't suck. It's good. But the one of the hosts is a North Carolina fan, so he hates Duke. So he purposely, every time they mention Duke, all he's only trashing them. <laughs> they came out yesterday's episode. These guys are talking, and they're like, who are the top three teams in the country? So the other guy, the other co-host, is like, Duke's number one, Michigan State, whatever. You know, he names his top three. Mm. This guy, Tate Fraser, has Duke as the third best team in the country. So I don't care <laughs> who you are or what kind of fan you are or what team you're, you're aligned with. No rational human can tell me that Duke is not the number one team in the country right now. Like, it just, it doesn't compute, yeah. you know? Like, it's, he's such a homer that actually I had to push, like, delete and unsubscribe, and I'm like, I turned it off. Okay, you're entitled. I haven't listened <laughs> to the show, so I won't subscribe to it now. 
And also, I don't know if I have enough time to listen to yet another new show. I did find a new podcast that I've been listening to as well. Which is what? Well, it has nothing to do with sports. It's called The Daily. You probably heard of it. The Daily? Yeah, it's it's uh, from the New York Times. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you're so... Uh, I guess after we did our crossover with those smart guys, you trying to like... I'm trying uh, to become a smart guy myself. Yeah, so, great. So The Daily is... Uh, it's 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 on daily. And, yeah. and it arrives in my on my phone... Before I wake up every day, oh. um, and it's usually about twenty minutes. What is it about, though? It's most oftentimes about politics, oh. but but it could be about any news thing that's going on. Um, but you're interested in what's going on in the U.S. politics because I am, but we never talk about it. No, we don't talk about it because that's not what this show <laughs> is. But I, I'm not so interested. No, no, we don't in talk it. about just, it ever. I'm not so interested. In it. I just want to know what's going on so that if I ever find myself in a situation. Where people are talking about it, I can speak yeah. and sound like I know what I'm talking about. As usual with you, it's always about impressing girls. Or people, not just girls. Or people. Yeah. Okay. Not just girls. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that don't impress me much. I wanted to mention this. I wanted to mention actually for the last month. And it's really not even news. But I'm just surprised that... Um, this year, I didn't hear any announcement or anything, but this year, all the Canadians games, or a lot of the Canadians games in English, are on TSN2 this year. That's, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's this. never happened before. They've always been on Sportsnet yeah. ever since they got an English uh, television deal. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, I see these commercials, Habs on TSN2, and I don't get any of the games because they black them out here. Yeah, But uh, I was a little surprised because TSN2, in case you're not aware, it's not like a, a top-tier network. It's not a top-tier channel. It's not like TSN 1, 3, 4, or 5. It's different. Like, right. they put sports on that channel that are like secondary sports and, mm -hmm. you know. So I, I almost felt like, you know, that's almost sort of insulting. Like, you're putting the Canadians yeah. on TSN2. Um, yeah, yeah. But I'm glad you I'm glad you mentioned this because beginning of the year, one of the guys on the radio here was saying, "Oh, the Canadians are on are on TSN two tonight," and then I was like, "No, they're not." In my head, I was like, "No, they're not," and and I'm like, "This is really like not." I mean, they're not being clear because in my mind, I was saying they're only on TSN two if you're a Bell subscriber, because that's how it was last year. You could get a regional feed of the game mm -hmm. only if you're a Bell subscriber. So me, as a Videotron subscriber, I couldn't get those games on TSN, even though they were on. Mm. But this year, it's not the same. I can get those games mm -hmm. on TSN. And I don't know how. I don't know. Like, you're saying there was no there was no fanfare. There was no announcement. There was no well, Maybe anything. there was in Montreal, the but there wasn't here. I, I, I didn't hear about it. But, like, it's just, the, the games are just there. But then again, you're right. Maybe there was some kind of announcement. And... I'm I'm the a kind of more uh, savvy viewer in that I don't care what channel stuff is on right. as long as it's on right right so it's like is the game on okay but I mean like I was surprised the, at uh, all these games that are actually on TSN the thing is it doesn't even matter to you and almost anyone in Montreal because every single Canadian's game is on in French and yes. even though French and I usually is, watch in French exactly, anyways even though French is yeah. your first language you'll probably just go to RDS because you know it's on RDS so it doesn't yeah, yeah. make a difference. Um, but TSN, I think, has changed their structure slightly because now TSN 2, all the Canadians games are on that channel. TSN right. 3, that's the Jets channel. And I don't uh, know what TSN, I think TSN 1 is, yeah, but is that's the what I was channel. Saying. And I think these TSN used to be, these used to be the regional broadcasts and they were only available for Bell subscribers. Right. And now somehow it's changed. The, the, it's lifted, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe the other cable companies gave in and said, we don't care. Right. And let them, let them show it or... I don't know. I'm not sure what happened there. I'm glad you mentioned it. This is something that's been like on my mind for a little while. And I was like, never really like thought about it. Like, I mean, I thought about it. I never really like mentioned it to you. And I knew you would come up with this. You're like, everything that revolves around broadcasting and TV, you're on top of it. The other thing I wanted to ask you about, not so much a question, yeah. more of a, more of an observation. Yeah. Um, so I, I hear, you know, the news about the Canadians, you know, this guy's out with a lower body injury or this guy's coming back from injury and should play his first game next week or whatever, yada, yada. Yeah. So last week before Carey Price came back, yeah. I started hearing news about David Schlemko, how he was progressing nicely and he was going to play a few games in Laval and then he'd be back in the Canadians lineup. 
But the yeah. way they were talking about it was like as if he was the second coming of Bobby Orr. Like David well, Schlemko, he's healthy. He's going to be back in the lineup. This is going to be the yeah. most amazing thing for the Canadians. And I'm like, so are you kidding me? It's David Schlemko. I mean, he's not a household name even in his own household. <laughs> so true. But the thing is, you know, when you acquire a guy and and like he's – He's like, he, he hasn't played a game since we acquired him, right? Like, he, he's been out the whole preseason, the whole everything, right? Mm. So, he, this, this mythical David Schlemko myth is, like, built up. And I think people are thinking he's much, much better than he is. Now, don't get me wrong. He's good. He's a fine NHL defenseman. And actually, with the the state of the Montreal Canadiens defenseman core, like, he he's they need him, right? Because he's better than some of the guys that they've been using, right? But... Yeah, and, and and actually the fact that he's a left-handed shot is, like, what they need because they, they, they don't have any. And, like, but you're right. Like, he's fine, you know? He's fine. He's fine. He's a good player. He, he'll fit in, but he's not, he's not, It's you know, they didn't acquire Bobby Orr, you know? <laughs> the other... The, I went to the game on Monday, right? Before you tell me about the game on Monday... Yeah. The other question I wanted to ask you about the Canadians is... How is the uh, how's the Alish Hemsky experiment going? Well, it's exactly how I told you it was going to go. <laughs> I, I I haven't heard his name in a month. Well, he, well, God. <laughs> I, <laughs> he's out with a concussion. So that's it. His his uh... supposedly he's close to coming back. But the thing is, when he does come back, they're going to put him on the fourth line. He's not. He's hardly going to play. He'll probably get injured again. And, like, what, does he have no points, one point? I don't know what he has, almost nothing. I told you at the beginning of the year that he he was going to be a no factor and that not only would he not score anything, he probably wouldn't even play 20 games, right? Like, I I, I didn't think he would even play 20 games, never mind scoring 20 goals that some maniacal fans thinking he's going to get. Like, there's some crazy delusional fans out there thinking this guy's actually going to score 20 goals. And if you look at his history, he's only ever scored 20 goals once in his career. So what makes you think now he's going to do that, Mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, no, the Alex Hemsky thing is useless. Um, I feel that actually they might be waiting for him to come off of IR so they could waive him. Oh, I see. Right. I think they they are have may have intentions of waiving him, but they can't as long as he's not healthy. Okay. So that that might that might be what happens. Okay. Yeah. So I did go to the game against Columbus. How was it? Um, it's fine. I had some really nice seats. Um. Thank you to Jason Glazer for those. Mm-hmm. And um, we had a good time. And the Habs won. But like... like uh, The Habs are hot. What do they want? Like four I, in a row? Well, yeah, because they're back to their old system. <laughs> well, they have their goalie now. That's the system. <laughs> <laughs> they're back. They're getting back to their old system, which gave them a lot of success, which is, you know, score a couple goals and, and let the goalie and let Carey Price save everything else. Yeah. And, and at the beginning of the year... The Habs fans were going crazy when they were losing, and everyone was going nuts. And the thing is, they were so many games that they lost at the beginning of the year. They were playing really well, you know. They outshot the opponent by a wide margin. They had tons of scoring chances, and then they would just lose their mind for five minutes and give up three goals in five minutes. And during that whole stretch of terrible losses, there was one constant: there was no goaltending. Doesn't matter who. Like take Carey Price out of this. Mm-hmm. When your goalie is and we went through this a few years ago when Price was injured and Mike Condon was in mm-hmm. starting all those games. Remember a couple of years oh, ago? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. It, it doesn't matter who the goalie is. If you're sub 900 save percentage, you're going to lose. doesn't matter who you are. And it, and and the Edmonton Oilers are proof of that right now, mm-hmm. right? They can't win any games. They're a high-scoring team. Can't win any games. If you're above, nine, if you're above 910, you know, you're going to be in the game. And and that's where they are. Doesn't and doesn't matter who the goalie is. Could be Carey Price. Could be Charlie Lindgren. Could be Antti Niemi. They they need a goalie that's going to stop shots. Now we know that Carey Price has a good history of making saves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so when he's in there, there's a pretty good chance that we're going to be above that nine ten nine even nine twenty save percentage. Right. So 
it's looking it's looking bright. I think the Canadians have at least put themselves in a situation where they can talk about the playoffs now. Right? The thing is, I don't know if I want them to make the playoffs because so what? They can squeak into the playoffs, you know, finish eighth or seventh, and then well, this is what I told you. Likely lose in the first round, and then Remember, they're they're yeah. constantly mediocre. They're constantly yeah. not getting a high draft pick, and yeah. so they're in this this vicious cycle of just being average. So what good does that do anybody? It's it's like what I told you like three, four weeks ago. What's going to happen when we get to the trading deadline and the Canadians are six points out of a playoff spot at the trading deadline? Mm-hmm. I don't see. What's I can't ca- see Mark Bergevin being a seller. I can't see it happening, especially if he thinks that this is his last year and he's going to be fired. There's no yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. So I have a feeling you're right. They're going to go all in and it's going to be the wrong move because they're going to, you know, they're going to trade more assets that they don't even have, right? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So that's hockey. Yeah, that's it. Habs focus. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't mind that. Did you Did you see that Chris Russell own goal? No, I didn't. I oh, haven't watched the, like any hockey highlights. It seems like in a week. So the Leafs played the Oilers this week, right? Mm-hmm. Chris Russell f- scored for the Oilers to tie the game four four in the third period. Okay. And then like two minutes later, he scored on his own net by accident. Like a la Steve Smith. Against Grant Well, Fear. Steve Smith was like, he was coming around from behind the net yes. and he kind of got tangled up with his own goalie and it kind of went in, right? Yeah, he shot this it is off like, the back of the goalie. This is butt. like the ball, the puck comes into the slot, Russell's turned around and he's trying to shoot the, he's just trying to clear the puck by shooting it backwards off his own, you know, boards mm-hmm. because he's facing that way. Mm-hmm. But he shoots it right, at the, right into the net. <laughs> It was like a slap shot. You know, we fired it. Was that the game-winning goal? Being, yes, a game-winning goal. So, you know, everybody was taking shots at Chris Russell and everything, but... Poor guy. You know. Yeah, poor guy. I mean, like, as if he's doing it on purpose. Right, exactly. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you like that World Cup draw Oh, yes, yesterday? thank you for bringing that up. So, they tell you, like, <laughs> watch the World Cup draw, 9.50 a.m. You turn it on, and it's like 45 minutes of crap before they finally get to the draw. Like, you see people 40- dancing and, like... It was like, what's going on here? Just tell me who's playing who. It was 45 minutes of, like, the speeches by, like, the FIFA president and Vladimir Putin. Then some kind of weird Euro trash, like, song. Mm -hmm. Remember that Columbus book? Columbus Euro trash. You know, where they sing some in Russian, some in English, and, you know, the FIFA song. I don't know what it was. Some really weird thing. And then, uh, then some kind of weird, like, not weird, but I mean, they're trying to show Russia. So they're showing like these Russian, like dancers, right? All costumed up. Could you imagine, could you imagine if you tune in to watch the March Madness selection show and for the first 45 minutes, you see like Taylor Swift and Black Eyed Peas and and all these bands. And then they only get to the, the, to the teams like an hour later. Could you imagine (laughs) people would be losing their minds? That's what happened. The, the, you're, you're right. The March Madness selection shows the best because it comes on at 6.30 or 7, whatever time it comes on. Yeah. And and within like 15 minutes, it's over. Yeah. Like they do it. They do it the whole thing in 15 minutes and then they recap it for 15 minutes. Like they, it take, right? they do stretch it out a little longer now than they used, a little used to bit. be 30 minutes. Yeah. Now it's an hour long show. Yeah. So but it I starts mean, at you, 6 you instead s- of 6.30. But, yeah. but yes, they do get to the teams quickly. You see the teams right away, and then the rest is analysis, yeah, right? Yeah. Here it was like it was slow torture. But the thing <laughs> is, I expected this. This is what I fully expected to happen because you, you're new to this uh, world soccer world. You're right. Uh, I don't really football. pay attention. So I mean, I watched the Euro draw two years ago. It was exactly the same as this. Mm-hmm. It was the same thing, even worse actually. I think. And so, like, I expect like this is this is what it's going to be. But the draw is the draw, and it's in, you know, so. I mean, we've never done, we've never been doing this podcast while a big um, international soccer tournament's been going on. No, we haven't. Right? We haven't. So, you know, um, I've already put on my calendars the, the England games. So when does it start? What month? It starts in June. Okay. I think June 14th or something is the first game. England's first game is June 18th the- and then the June 24th. So those games are already on my calendar and I'm going to and as soon as I'm as soon as we're into 2018 when I'm able to I'll be requesting those days off <laughs> so I can focus on watching the games. The days off. Hold on a second. You you work from home. What do you need know, to ask need for to, the day off for? I need to be I need to be focused. I can't be getting calls or emails like while the game's going on. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah. I, I, my, my limited knowledge of, of soccer, 
Yeah. I, I noticed yesterday that uh, Group B looks like the, the toughest group. Who's in that group? I believe it's Por- uh, Spain and Portugal are in there, if I'm not mistaken. Spain and Portugal, Morocco, Iran. Well, the thing is, Morocco and Iran are, are no good. No, but Spain but and Portugal, both those teams have a chance to win it all. There was always going to be one group where Spain was going to crash the party and make it tough. Because I don't know if you saw how the how the draw worked. I didn't. The top eight teams were all in one pot, mm-hmm. right? And then the next eight teams were in pot two. Mm-hmm. So in theory, you have like a top seed. You have every, in theory, every group has like a number one seed, a number two seed, a three, and a four. Okay. Now, the thing is, Spain was in pot two because they, they didn't do well in the qualifying. Oh, I see. They didn't dominate the qualifying. So they were always going to be one of these teams that was going to screw up one of the groups. Mm-hmm. And the other screw up in the groups is that Russia is in pot one. And they are the hosts, so they're automatically in pot mm-hmm. one, and they're actually the lowest ranked team of any of the thirty-two. Okay. So Group A is ridiculously easy <laughs> because <laughs> Russia is like the number one seed, and they are as good as a number four. Okay. Right. And Group B, you know, the thing is, like, the top two teams are going to come out of every group, right? Mm-hmm. Not just the leader. Right. So you you just got to get to that number two spot, right? Yeah. So. Um, Spain and Portugal both could advance, but certainly, um, seeing them play against each other in you know I think in their first game of the group mm. is going to be great. Yeah, who doesn't want to see that, right? Of course. Well, I mean, maybe you don't, but and don't and know. and both of those countries have beautiful fans. Oh, many of the countries, especially Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> did did you are you gonna like adopt like a team to root for? I've already done closer? that. I've already done that. Well, it's Denmark, yes, right? Yes, exactly. That's because that's where my mother is from. So usually you, you cheer for them. Do you know any players on Denmark? No, I don't. But I do have a Denmark official soccer jersey. Yeah, with Schmeichel, right? Thomas. Uh, John Dahl oh, Thomason, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was the big scorer when they yeah. when they were decent, a few, like maybe 20 years ago, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they have one really, really good player, Denmark, just so you can know. Okay. Christian Eriksen. Okay. He plays um, on Tottenham in the Premier League, and he's a really, really good player. So um, that's that's pretty cool. They, they have a bunch of other good players, but, I mean, he's the, certainly the star. They so used to have a really they, good goalie. Yeah, Peter Schmeichel. Oh, is he still on the team? No, he's long retired. Okay. <laughs> His son, actually, is uh, a goalie now in the Premier League. Okay. Yeah, he plays for Leicester City, I think. I'm not sure. Okay. Look at that, yeah. bringing the soccer knowledge. This is a whole <laughs> well, other level of uh, podcasting that I've never expected. Right. As you know, I watch the Premier League every Saturday morning or when I can, and I'm going to go watch as soon as we finish this call. So, yeah. I mean, what's great is the Premier League, so many of the players in all these teams are in the Premier League, right? So I really, you really get to know a lot of the top players you know in the world. And I think it's going to be fun to watch the World Cup this year because, like, I in since the last World Cup, my soccer knowledge is like greatly improved, mostly because I played the video game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so because of the video Who game, video I know games all the educational. I know all the players. Like, I know so many players, right? So um, I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, awesome. I I love that. I love that uh, World Cup preview. Thank you. Yeah, that'll be our only soccer talk until you know June. Probably. Actually, we should do like a World Cup preview in June. We should get someone on who knows what they're talking right. about. Right, and also uh, we may want to preview the MLS Cup. I know you're. I know you're efforting to get a big guest. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. We'll see right? how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You got anything else? No, That's it's a it? very uh, thin week. Well, have a happy birthday again. Thank you. Say hi to Joan Carly. I will. You, and, you just uh, did because Joe listens, so you just said yeah. hi to them. <laughs> And I'll speak to you next week. Okay. All right, bye. Don't you want to do the official sign-off? All right, so the official sign-off. I completely forgot. So before we sign off, remember, you can listen and subscribe to new and archived episodes of the Skip and Josh podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, or the podcast app of your choice. And if you listen through Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review. Um, Send us an email if you love us, hate us, have questions for us, anything, Skip and Josh Show at gmail.com. You can uh, tweet to us, Skip and Josh, or check out our Facebook page where you can leave a review for our show also. And um, if you don't remember anything that I just said, just go to skipandjosh.com and you have links for everything. Beautiful. Thank you.
All right. Talk to you next week. Goodbye. The Skip and Josh podcast is over now. Don't worry. There'll be another episode soon.